I am Patrolman Jerry Cameron of the Bronx Division of the New York Police Department, your host on this gangbuster story. The patrolman on the beat, serving to the best of his ability, becomes a part of the section of humanity that he protects. He's aware of the heartbeat, the births, joys, and tragedies. And it's tragedy which stalks this story. It's the manner of death of Kathy Raywall and Mike Malloy, I'll unfold. And especially Mike Malloy. I think of him as durable Mike Malloy. This old character never suspected that anybody was trying to murder him. In a moment, I'll tell you more. Everybody in the neighborhood knew Mike. Many of us liked him. Though an outsider might have seen gentle Mike merely as a bum, a man living too near the gutter. But no one, especially the two men who marked him as another victim in a murder racket, suspected how durable Mike was. Mike, Mike Malloy. Oh, hi, Officer Cameron, got a deal? <laughs> no deal today. But what are you doing? Oh, just a few tips. But I got a big deal coming up tomorrow. Uh-huh. But what's this tip business? Oh, I've been doing it all day yesterday. One guy gave me a 35 cent tip. Why? You might cost some poor policeman his job. If the sergeant doesn't see any chalk marks, he'll think he's not working. Gee, yeah, I never thought of it. I never thought of that. Well, I guess I'll have to wait for the big deal tomorrow. Well, thanks, Officer Cameron. See you later. Okay, go by. Red Marino operated a neighborhood bar, and Mike adopted it as his own. Marino, only friendly with paying customers, found Mike as difficult to rebuff as a puppy. Besides, Mike could be resourceful. There were nights when Marino didn't clean up his bar after rolling out the last customers. Mike knew the unwashed glasses were left on the tables and bars until morning. So, with the right timing, Mike could mix one of his very own specialties. He merely poured the last drops from each glass, whether or not it was whiskey, beer, gin, or wine, into one container. Mike even had a name for this eye-opener, calling it Malloy's Little Wonder. Sure, he said, he always wondered a little what was in it. Not that Mike really cared. He'd drink anything he could get. All right, Mike, beat it. Hi, Mr. Marino. Got a deal? Scram, bum. I got a drain in the sink. I don't need you. I got a new deal coming up tomorrow. I'll let you in for a drink. All right, I'll come back tomorrow. Bye, everybody, you drink. Excuse me, Mr. Masco. What about an eye opener, Red? You're nuts. You got a funeral to do today, I hope. I haven't been called yet. Give me the bottle. Anyway, you're the bereaved party, Red. I just bury him. Want something to take the edge off your grief? Can it? I'm getting nervous. <laughs> when do you suppose they'll find Kathy's body? Oh, the landlady will stumble over her soon enough.
He called me, and I sent for Detective Lieutenant Kelly. We can't make up a case on guesswork, Cameron, especially when all the facts are against you. I'm not a detective, Lieutenant, and I don't want to butt in, but... Well, I knew Kathy, like I know everybody on my beat. They tell me all their problems. She didn't drink much by herself. Don't apologize, Cameron. Always glad of suggestions. But the medical examiner said she died of alcoholism and pneumonia. That's not criminal. That's another thing. Why should she lay in front of an open window soaking wet? Well, she could have taken a shower and passed out. Maybe, but it just doesn't sound right. We question everybody in the building. What a group. None of them saw or heard anyone with the blonde last night. Have you checked on her boyfriends? We checked them out. All of them have alibis. One of them is a businessman in the neighborhood. Owned a bar on 3rd Avenue. Red Merino. That's crumb. You can't lock a man up for being a crumb. Haven't got the space. Look, Cameron, why don't you keep an eye out? Might uh, turn up with something. You never can tell. Officer Cameron? Yes? I'm taking up a collection for some flowers. Would you like to contribute? Why, yes. I wish everyone was that generous. I'll have the flowers sent over to Mr. Pasquale's funeral parlor. If you remember anything, the police ought to know. Get it to me right away. I followed Lieutenant Kelly's advice. I asked questions around the neighborhood, but all I got was whispers. And it was only natural that I kept a close watch on activities in Marino's bar. But about all I learned was that if Kathy Raywall had been Red Marino's girl, Red didn't seem overcome by grief. I also learned that Frank Pasqua, the undertaker who had buried Kathy Raywall as cheaply as possible, was Marino's best customer. Free drinks were not like Marino. I decided to ask more questions. How about one in the house? Get out of here before I throw you. You know, I'm getting sick of that drunk, too. Shows up every time I hold a funeral and blubbers all through the services. Doesn't make any difference whether he knows the stiff or not. You better watch the embalming fluid. That lush will drink anything. Say, we've been looking for another pigeon. Mike. Why not? You just said he'd drink anything. You think you can get him an insurance policy? I haven't failed yet, have I? With me as a beneficiary? Hey, wait a minute. You were beneficiary on Kathy Raywall. Well, why not? She was my girlfriend. Hi, Officer Cameron. Nibs looks in fine shape. Mike. Ah, well, thank you, Officer. Dogwood Nibs. <laughs> See? <laughs> That's because neither of you forgets to take the other for a walk every afternoon. Oh, no, we don't. Well, we're in a hurry. We've got an appointment, Officer. Uh, just a minute, Mike. Huh? Have you remembered anything I don't know about Kathy Raywall? Kathy Raywall? The blonde girl that died mysteriously. Oh, yes, she was so nice. I cried and cried at the services. It was so pretty. I'm sure of that. But have you remembered anything? Hardly nobody else cried except me. Oh, no, I don't suppose so. Well, now we've got to run along, officer. Excuse me. Thank you, officer. Yeah. If Red bounces nibs, let me know. I'd be happy to call the Humane Society. Come on, Mike, we got a deal. Have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 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 what's the deal? Mike, all you have to do is to sign some papers and you get free drinks for the rest of your life. Free? That's right. For the rest of my life? Absolutely. Where do I sign? We can talk about the rest of it later. You have to come with me this afternoon. But remember, 
This deal is just between us three. Oh, I understand perfectly. I've been in lots of secret deals before. Make mine a double. <clears throat> is the one who preys on human weakness for his own personal gain. Marino and Pasqua gave Mike Malloy unlimited drinks. Finally, they were ready to do murder. Mike, old pal, we're gonna let you have the new specialty of the house on me. In the mint. On the axe. Little sherry to dry it up. Ash of bitters. Now the gin. The sudden welcome mat that Marino had unrolled for Mike was out of character and they'd suddenly become so palsy with Mike Malloy. They had to have an angle. I went on asking questions. It's daylight and he ain't breathed for two hours. Let's call the insurance man. Wouldn't look right to call before he gets to the office. I'll check Mike one more time, then we'll drag him out of the alley. He smells like a busted radiator. Yeah, let's get rid of that cur, too. It's... Good evening. Marino and Pasqua kept on plying Mike with antifreeze. The only result was to make him more friendly. Getting impatient, they tried to add tomaine poisoning to Mike's diet. From a can that had been left open for a week, they fed him sardines, generously sprinkled with ant poison. They also fed him oysters, pickled in turpentine, and antifreeze. from a tin can were hidden in sardine sandwiches. But Mike never had it so good. He didn't even get a heartburn. So they decided to try more drastic measures. When Mike passed out, Pasqua and Marino took him to an alley. They drenched him with water and left him in the bitter cold. He would either freeze to death or develop pneumonia, they thought. You nervous? Yeah, I gotta do something about this coal. Maybe I should have taken out a policy on you. Don't be funny. <laughs> Call the insurance man, it's after 10. They'll be smart. Wait till they find Mike. Wait till there's something in the papers about it. That'll take all day. Hi, partners, how's the deal? How about the night opener? I woke up with the chills. You know, it's rained last night. and Marino were amazed at Mike's durability, but they did not stop their plotting. They continued to feed him the poisonous liquor. Mike, with evident enjoyment, continued to drink it, stay alive, and come back for more. Certain that stronger murder methods would succeed, the conspirators set up another cruel plan to do away with Mike and get a payoff on the insurance policy. After Mike was unconscious from the drinks, Marino and Pasqua took him away in a car. You honk your horn when you're ready. I know what to do. Don't you get chicken. Pass 
Well, you don't suppose Mike used another name, do you? Keep looking. I'll call the hospitals again. Well, he was lying in the street. If he was in the hospital, he'd be there this morning. Then I'll call the morgue. I've got a good connection there. Sam, Pasqua, how's every little thing? Yeah, I need some information. Say, who you got new on ice since last night? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, thanks. None of them will do me any good. We were all puzzled by Mike's continued absence. But despite my lack of success, I was still thinking about Kathy Raywall. Hardly nobody else cried, Mike said. But she did have flowers and a proper service, thanks to the collection. The landlady was proud of the job she had done. Red Marino had come forth with $25 to help give a better funeral. And Frank Pasqua had knocked off the same amount from the funeral costs. Real nice men, she said. Real nice. Have you seen Mike Malloy? Oh, what's Mike got to do with us? I know he's been hanging out here. Oh, Red's been mighty nice to him, but we haven't seen him for a couple of days. Yeah, been good to the poor unfortunate. I'll bet. You're the liberal type. No, that's not fair, Cameron. Reno would be glad to buy you a drink on the house. Won't you, Marino? Hmm? Sure. Well, what'll it be? He knows he's safe. I'm in uniform. If you see Mike, tell him I'm looking for him. Pasqua and Marino shrugged off the policeman's interest in Mike Malloy. They didn't know how curious the officer had become. They sweated out what appeared to be a bigger problem, an insurance policy they couldn't collect on until someone produced a body. Despite Mike's seeming indestructibility in the past, they had no doubt they had finally done away with him. But they didn't know how durable Mike Malloy really was. Hi, partners. Long time no see. How's the deal? Where have you been? I was hit by a car. Old ladies found me thought it must have been a drunk driver. Yeah, I was shaking pretty good. The lady was nursing me. She even made a sweater for little nibs here. See? Ah, she was nice. But all she gave me was food and I'm dry. The men were disgusted with their inability to dispose of Mike and impatiently watched him drink. They also wanted to watch him die. More another one for Mike. It's the second bottle. You'll get paid. This is the grandest party anybody ever saw me. Running a room and everything. <laughs> We're glad to have you back, Mike. Yeah, let's drink a toast to our old pal, Mike. Mm. Not to me, not to me. To the gentleman who gave me the biggest deal of my life, Mr. Moreno. And Miss. Mr. Pasqua. Mm. A wonderful deal. Kelly, I checked up. Marino was listed as the beneficiary on Mike's insurance policy. Go on. Remember Marino's girlfriend, Kathy Raywall? Yeah. He was the beneficiary on her policy, too. She died of alcoholism and pneumonia. Yeah? What did Mike die of? The same thing. They found him in front of an open window, soaking wet. 
The landlady said his brother rented the room. Well? Mike Malloy didn't have a brother. I had convinced the lieutenant that Mike was murdered, but we needed evidence. Did you take anything out of the room? I should say so. About a dozen bottles. Anything else? Glasses. Is this the way you arrange the room with the bed under the window? Certainly not. But those cracks you'd freeze to death. Yes, I know. In other words, the men pulled the bed under the window. I guess so. I certainly didn't. Can you remember anything else? This is important. Well, the only thing else was the shower. Shower? It was under the bed. Under the bed? I guess it was theirs. I never saw it before. Where is it? Down the hall? No, it's in the closet. It's brand new. It didn't seem right to throw it away. It's a shower hose, Lieutenant. Shower. Might be. Where's the nearest gas fixture? The stove. The break had finally come. Too late for durable Mike Malloy. either of these men? That red-headed one. He rented the room. He said he was Mr. Malloy's brother. Thank you, Mrs. George. I'll give him a good home. Marino and Pasqua were held on suspicion of murder. Lieutenant Kelly ordered Mike's body exhumed and traces of gas were found. It was through this the men were convicted of murder and executed at Sing Sing. There was an ironic twist. The traces of gas can only be found in the blood. If Undertaker Pasqua, in an effort to save a few dollars, had not buried Mike without embalming him, the traces of gas would never have been discovered. In just a moment, gangbusters will present a clue of a person still at large and wanted by the police. Attention. Attention to all citizens and police. Wanted for escape from Alcatraz. Ralph Rowe, 49. Six feet tall, 170 pounds. Gray eyes. Scar above right eyebrow. Several stars tattooed on left hand. Ralph Rowe, with at least eight arrests, was sentenced to 99 years at Alcatraz for bank robbery. Rowe escaped from Alcatraz and is now a fugitive. Approach with caution. Rowe is dangerous and may be armed. Repeat, wanted for escape from Alcatraz. Ralph Rowe, 49, 6 feet, 170 pounds, gray eyes. Scar above right eyebrow. If you have any information concerning this clue, get in touch with your local police, the FBI, or gangbusters at once. Next week, another story will be presented, taken from authentic police files and records. Until then, on behalf of the police, we invite you to join us. Gangbusters, created by Phillips H. Lord.
case you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews.